How's it going? Gone here. I did it again. I changed my legal name to Tiny Titan. Awesome. I'm not a lunatic, I only named myself after a car. From a video game. So welcome everyone to a new me. Tiny Titan. Titan. Alright, I'm stretching this too much. Let's talk about Mario Kart Wii. Hey. Mario Kart Wii is the sixth Mario Kart game. Whoa! Also, the third title after the console they were on. Dog! <laughs> Mario Kart was on a consistent streak of great games ever since the beginning. No misses whatsoever. Everyone with a Nintendo console bought Mario Kart, including Mario Kart DS, the fifth installment. And man, Mario Kart DS was a huge success, becoming the third best selling game of the DS with more than 20 million copies sold. This game sold like hotcakes, and why you ask? Because it's f***ing Mario Kart, every sane person knows that Donkey Kong in the go-kart is epic, and that includes your weird ass uncle cause he sure hell bought this game. So when the Nintendo Wii was announced and with the introduction of motion controls, it was finally time to take Mario Kart to the next level. I mean, Wii Sports and Super Mario Galaxy were cool and implemented motion controls in their own way, so let's see what Nintendo would do with the next Mario Kart game. Originally called Mario Kart X and then uncreatively renamed to Mario Kart Wii, it was announced in 2007 with positive reactions. Was it for the game? No, it was for a wheel. The only thing that everyone wanted was the Wii wheel, not even the game. Oh, I bought this cool wheel and it came with Mario for free! I often like to talk about the beta state of these games and there's not much notable stuff here compared to Wii's predecessors. From what I've gathered, P.T. Piranha and Koopa Paratroopa would make a return from Double Dash and Hammer Bro would make its playable debut, which wouldn't happen until the mobile game Mario Kart Tour. I would have loved to see these guys back compared to the characters we actually ended up getting. You know who I'm talking about. The Chain Chomp item would make a return from Double Dash and the Boo item from DS. I mean, the Boo item would be cool if it came back, but the Chain Chomp had no business being in this game. The Bullet Bill item was introduced in this game, and it's far superior to the Chain Chomp. This item never returned from Double Dash, so we may call it a relic from the past. Mario Kart Wii released in April 2008, and oh man, it's time to realize my wildest dreams! Can't get enough of wheels! Mario Kart Wii was an instant success at launch, with copies being difficult to find. If you wanted this game, you needed to camp outside your local game store one week before a restock happened. Maybe not that early. Mario Kart Wii was the game to get a Wii with. Nobody cares about Wii Sports anymore. This is what men's play. Almost everyone I know that had a Wii had Mario Kart Wii. It was a must-have game for every Wii owner. Now me, I never owned a Wii. I always was a PS3 guy and I grew up with that console. And when you pick one, you can't go with the other. Except that time when an Xbox 360 entered my household, but don't worry, it exploded after 7 days, I always look at the ceiling to remember the good times. I just wish there was a way to play Mario Kart Wii without buying an actual Wii, just play one game. If only I knew how. Yeah, we're emulating this one through the Dolphin Emulator, aka one of the best things, period. And what are we playing with? The f***ing irony. It's only half my fault it was her idea to yap about Mario Kart Wii and play with the non con controller that in all means is not meant for Mario Kart Wii. But was it a bad idea? Not at all, I'm gonna love this. Mario Kart Wii starts with the Mario Kart Wii box art that transitions into the actual Mario Kart Wii box art and the Mario Kart Wii logo. Cool. And hey, look at that, it's our favorite plastic garbage. The Wii Wheel. I like to joke around how this thing is useless and in hindsight, it actually is. Is it any different from moving the Wii remote? No, because you're gonna use the classic controller or a GameCube controller anyways, so why even bother? But for all the Wii will enjoys everywhere, I believe it was awesome when it came out and was a new thing. Heck, I loved the idea and wanted to try it back then, but that must have been before I became a pessimistic bitch. Overall, we will. Stupid. And that's the opinion of a person that never held a Wii will with their hands, so maybe I should shut up now and talk about the actual game. Grand Prix, Battle Mode, Versus and Time Trial. It's been a while, but f*** it, welcome back Mario Kart Super Circuit. No mission mode? A mission mode was meant to return from DS, but it ended up being scrapped and I've gotta ask. Why? It was my dose of single player fun, and you take it away from me? Here's our character roster. 
I like it. It's not my favorite, but it works, it's cool. I personally like how it's divided from lightest to heaviest characters. We have the usual Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, Daisy, Yoshi, Koopa Troopa, Donkey Kong, Bowser, Wario and Waluigi returning from the previous games. Not only do we have Baby Mario and Baby Luigi, but now we have Baby Peach and Baby Daisy. <sighs> I just don't see the appeal. The babies were never my favorite, so please, just stop. Two of that comes back after being absent from DS, which is neat, and Dry Bones as well. Birdo, Diddy Kong, Bowser Jr. and King Boo return from Double Dash, and I love to see it. King Boo especially. Rosalina is one of the new characters, and yep, I expected that. Right after Mario Galaxy, Rosalina was the new Mario Girl, and including her on the new Mario Kart was a no-brainer. The best part, it's not just her, it's Rosalina and Luma, so now we have a 2-on-1 character. Whoa. Dry Bowser also made its debut on Wii and is just a more bony and overall better version of Bowser. He's a good representation of the new Super Mario Bros. series. Mr. Mario Kart Wii himself is on Mario Kart Wii, believe it or not. Funky Kong. No doubt the most popular inclusion. Funky Kong is the most used character of this game, and hey, that's what happens when your stats are cracked and he's the best character because of that. I like me some Funky Kong, but oh, is that me? Mii's also made their debut on Mario Kart Wii, and this is beyond cool. The sky was the limit for what characters would be driving a bike. Finally, Karl Marx on Mario Kart. I thought I'd never see the day. Oh yeah, we didn't have this before. Bikes were introduced on Wii, and they serve as sometimes a faster and risky alternative to the normal kart, allowing you to do wheelies like there's no tomorrow. These tend to be hard to drive compared to the carts, but when you finally master it, oh, it's a good feeling. Mario Kart Wii also introduced an automatic mode, Basically an easy mode that lets the game race and drift for you. I'm sure we don't need this even with the wrong controller, so let's go manual and play our first round. Mario Kart Wii is nothing like its first. Oh, oh, that's the actual game, oh, oh, okay, okay. Mario Kart Wii is another Mario Kart, but this time on widescreen and dirtier. That's it. I'm not a fan of this look, this reminds me of Uncharted and Halo 3, not Mario Kart. This shadowing is ass, but in defense of this game, it only looks bad in some courses. That aside, this looks and plays like a normal Mario Kart, and that's okay. Fortunately, we did get a new feature, the Trick Jump, a feature that makes me awake at night. With the shake of a Wii Remote, or in this case, the R2 button, while jumping from a ramp, you can do an awesome Trick Jump. I love this. This changed everything. Playing any other Mario Kart game before Wii, with the exception of Double Dash, Feels kinda lame and slow, that trick jump makes a difference. Now for the items. Most items return from previous games, including the fake item box, making its final appearance on the mainline game. Why did they stop? Honestly, I don't know, but glad we have it here, even if it's kinda useless and easily avoidable. Maybe that's the reason. The bullet bill makes its first appearance on Wii and oh I love this item. It's not one you catch all the time, only if you suck at this game, but when you get one, no matter the situation, it's perfect. But hey, why wouldn't it? It makes you invincible and faster than whatever. The Bullet Bill might be the best item in Mario Kart history. But I can't say much about the Mega Mushroom. This item is such a disappointment. With the ability of making you bigger for a certain amount of time, the Mega Mushroom does nothing. It only makes your hitbox bigger and protects you from incoming shells. It's not a good item, and that's what I also feel about the power block. I hate the power block, losing it it's cool, but it's annoying when everyone spins out. It genuinely fills me up with rage. Imagine someone comes up to you and shows you a cool box and then you spin out and fall to the ground. I hate it. However, you can avoid it while me there, and that's cool. Overall, it's a watered down lightning item, but it's still annoying. And then we have the Thundercloud, an awesome item that hurts you? Yeah, if Mario Kart items were class, the Thundercloud would be the quiet kid at the back of the class. When you get this item, you have around 10 seconds till it strikes you and then you receive the same effect as lightning. But the fun thing about the Thundercloud is that you can pass it on to another player while it's activating, and that's an awesome concept. I think we've never received anything similar to that after this game, so maybe Nintendo should revisit the idea of the Thundercloud. Mario Kart Wii has a selection of 8 cups, 4 new and 4 retro, same as Mario Kart DS. And these courses are... how do I say this? 50-50. Half of these are good, and the other half is just bad, but let's take a look at each of them. The Mushroom Cup starts off with most likely one of the worst tracks of Mario Kart history. Luigi Circuit. Hey, it doesn't look like it, but I fuck with Luigi, alright? He's the man. But this track doesn't make justice for Luigi and as a first track. 
It's lame and there's no notable aspects. The weirdest part is that the first track of Double Dash was also called Luigi Circuit, and that one is far superior than this one. Mumu Meadows is so fun and cozy, it's like a spread out Mumu farm with lots of obstacles to trick jump. This is how you make a farm course. I love Mumu Meadows. Mushroom Gorge, how we love Mushroom Gorge. This is the trick jump track, with almost the entire course composing of mushrooms. This is a fan favorite and a true classic Wii course. Toad's Factory, the place where they make the atom boxes. Aesthetically, looks awesome. Playing it? It's fine. Nothing crazy, nothing here makes me wow, but the memorable one. Mario Circuit. Another one? Mario Circuit from Wii is interesting, not the best, but certainly not the worst. I think we've seen better Mario Circuits before. Coconut Mall, the most iconic Mario Kart Wii track. The entire track is a giant mall. That's it, and in my opinion that's enough to convince me. Basing it after the Piantos from Mario Sunshine is an odd choice, but man, driving up the escalator, jumping over the huge ramp to the outside, avoiding the cars, Coconut Mall is the best Mario Kart we can offer. And that also goes to DK Summit. Oh, I'm sorry, DK Snowboard Cross. This is like a snow version of DK Mountain, but I dare say it, kinda better. I still prefer the volcano and jungle look, but DK Summit is so much more fun with snow bumps and... What's that? Yeah, this game also introduced F-Pipes, another way to do tricks. It's great for extra boost. Wario's Gold Mine is so much fun. This is my go-to track in this game. Wario does know to make great tracks. The Star Cup starts off with Daisy Circuit, the most skippable track of Mario Kart Wii. This really was just made to prove that Luigi and Daisy are a couple. Kind of a filler track to be honest. Now Koopa Cape. Woo, it's time. I adore this track, but only the Wii version. That underwater segment with the pipe and green lasers is so much fun. And the track overall is beautiful, it reminds me of that era where Pepsi had some cool ads evolving water in the 2000s. Yeah, Koopa Cape reminds me of Pepsi. That's right. Maple Tree Way is such a vibe. I like Orange, so automatically, Maple Tree Way is one of the best tracks of all time. I don't make the rules. But I mean, who doesn't like Maple Tree Way? It's the best representation of Canada in a video game. I don't know. I know that they love leaves. Grumble Volcano. I got nothing. I don't like this one. I don't like my fair share of desert tracks, but I kind of f*** with Dry Dry Ruins. They just picked Desert Hills and went, put the temple on it. Genius. Moonview Highway is like a mix between Toad's Turnpike and Mushroom City, and I prefer it over those two. It's more diverse and interesting with two sections that don't look alike. They look like completely different tracks, and you don't see that all the time. Now we get into the big stuff. Bowser's Castle. Not particularly my favorite iteration of Bowser's Castle, but I like how it wiggles. It makes me happy inside. And here we go. The ultimate Mario Kart track. Wii's Rainbow Road. This is by far the hardest track in Mario Kart history. But who cares about that? This track is beautiful, and being based on Mario Galaxy is a huge plus. It's a hard one, but honestly I never had a major issue with this one. It's perfect. Now moving over to the retro courses, we encountered the most bizarre selection of courses I've seen so far. So instead of going one by one in depth, let's talk about the cups. Shell Cup. Absolute dog sh**. What kind of selection is this? Peach Beach? Yoshi Falls? Ghost Valley 2? And they don't look good, they look straight up ported from the source material. With the exception of SNES and GBA tracks, but that's obvious. Banana Cup. We love Waluigi Stadium and Delfino Square's inclusion here, but like I said, these don't feel new. I'm glad Mario Kart 8 for example reinvented the older courses and made them feel newer. Cause Mario Kart Wii sure didn't. Leaf Cup. I mean, because Jungle Parkway is a surprise, but nothing to write home about. Lightning Cup. Honestly, not the worst. SNES Mario Circuit 3 throws me off, but DK Mountain and N64 Bowser's Castle are good inclusions. Overall, like I said, 50-50. Kind of a letdown with the retro courses, but the new courses are definitely the highlight that made up for it. Did you know this game had online? What? Yeah, but only if you live in the past, cause this right here doesn't work. But if you want to play it, there's some fan-made mods and programs that bring the online back to life, and surprisingly, many people still play this game. Yep, even after Mario Kart 7 and 8, many people still come back to this game and it has some major online presence. This is a sign of a great game, but also some great fans because I see those mods everywhere on YouTube. But that's insanely cool. Mario Kart Wii is what every Super Mario Kart on the SNES wants to be. Good. It's a fun time, even when you're using a controller meant for Metal Gear Solid 4. I don't fear the devil, I take risks, so let's hope I survive the next 20 seconds safe and sound after the crime I just committed. That works. Thanks, Nintendo.